My name is Gabrielle Randall. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a visual artist, multidisciplinary. My primary mediums are sculpture, video, and self-portraiture. I actually started out as a writer, yeah, and I was doing a lot of poetry, a lot of fiction, and then I went to film school, and I thought I wanted to make feature-length films for a while, and then I realized that was a little bit too limiting for me, and so I went to fine art school for my MFA, and I found that there are so many different forms, so many different mediums of expressing myself. It's very, I think of it as, as well, f working in film and like having a BFA in film, that gave me this platform, this foundation of setting up lights and thinking of light in terms of composition and texture. So it gave me tools to work with, like the most basic tools. But then with that, I didn't like that there were so many limitations in what I could do with it. And so I just took the foundation and then I just made it my own, which is what I do with a lot of things. And then also I should say I'm not trained in ceramics or working with clay. So a lot of it was, you know, going on my own journey and finding things out that, for example, when you work with clay and you let it dry, it's brown and then it gets very ashy, like ash and white, which is what ceramics is, you know, defined as bone dry, which is what it has to be in order to get bisked in the kiln. But I skipped that part. But when I noticed that it was getting like this very dry, ashy color and that it wasn't maintaining that like vibrant brown, then I had to start experimenting with acrylics and tempera paint. And that opened me up to like, you know, experimenting with different color palettes and also resembling otherworldliness. I love just opposing delights, things that are delicious and, you know, associating with the ionic form um, and like consumption, but in a way that implies consent and pleasure. And I also have sculptures that are references to movies that have really inspired me. For example, this one is called Yellow Mary and it's inspired by Daughters of the Dust. It's made out of brown clay, unfired, and Yellow Mary was a character in the movie that really moved me. And I, the whole landscape of the movie was just like, earth and sand and wind and ocean. So these are seashells that I put inside of it. This one is called Delicatessen. It's about two pounds. I wanted to experiment with texture and like dimples. And these are also things that I've been able to maintain by letting them air dry. Like the, I want the presence of my hand to remain. Well, this one was made in 2020 and it's made out of brown clay, unfired. I don't use kilns. Um, and this is my hair, back when I had blue hair. And I would make a practice out of growing my hair, dyeing it, and then shaving it, and then using it as material. This one is also called How Many Licks. And I get inspiration from mostly like pop culture, black culture. Um, this one was inspired by Little Kim and like her legacy, her color palette, her outspokenness. This one is called Cairo and I got inspired by this one after coming back from the Metropolitan Museum and like the Egyptian wing. Um, and this is also my hair also. I'm fired clay, brown clay. They never have plant. I know for, for whatever reason, I, well, there are many reasons, but I love the ionic form and I always end up making that shape and I never start out with that being like the goal. It just happens. I keep coming back to the shape in different forms. I used to have a vision board in my old studio about um, different plants and flowers and waterfalls and like this is a poppy seed plant. So this is what a poppy seed looks like right before it buds. And it's like, this is so familiar, you know? And it's like, it's it's crazy because the yonic form is universal and it's everywhere. And so and this is what I got inspired by after seeing this photo. This one's called Venus. And I'll show you also what Venus looks like behind. 
I began making these forms in my own image. And then I started looking into nature and being like, it's not limited to just bodies. It's plants, it's rivers, it's like mounds of earth. It starts with this block of clay, and then I'll either cut it with a knife or I'll use this to swing. This is just like a standard ceramics tool, and I'll just kind of just like slice it. And then I work it into a ball. It always starts in a round ball, and I get it just like in a, not perfect, but I get it as closely as a sphere that I can. And then um, I lay it flat, and then I use a ribbon tool to carve out, kind of like this. So imagine this sculpture is just a round ball without an opening, and then I'll use the ribbon tool to you know, create an incision and then from there I hollow it out and I work and then I get into the folds. Like, you know, my inspiration is labias and like, you know, making all those folds and the different riffs. And yeah, and then from there, I let it dry. I let it get really dry and then I paint it. And then sometimes I leave them just painted like this one or sometimes I add my own hair. It's so satisfying watching a block of clay go from this to, for example, this, which is a sculpture named Shiva. And it's also really difficult and it's constantly, it's the sensation of my hands commanding the clay and then watching it slowly come to form. And there's always a point in my clay making where I'm so discouraged I want to give up because it's just like not doing what I needed to do. It's drying too quickly or it's too wet. And um, But pushing past that point, I always get to a place where I can find the folds and find you know the right strokes. And it's, it feels really rewarding in a way that is different than my work with photography. The more I began working with clay, like the presence of the ritual was really apparent. And it's, it's you know, as far as my own spirituality, I'm really into ancestry and just ancestry being a spiritual practice in itself, honoring ancestors. And also, you know, realizing that I am connected to entity that is like the collectiveness of everyone who came before me and how to reach that it's just like going through myself i've been very inspired by Kara walker who's like this giant in my eyes because she's so badass she really does whatever the fuck she wants in spite of like white people having something to say in spite of black people not agreeing with what she does a lot of black people you know and I just really relate to that and also uh, thinking about like what the taboo means and you know how there's this question of like who owns black pain and who owns black pleasure and how there's so many respectability politics. I believe she's really revolutionary. Huge uh, controversy between Kara Walker and Betty Slar um, and how you know Betty Slar got at least a hundred other black artists to sign a petition to have Carl Walker's work taken down. And reading about that, I was like, fuck, like this is, it's, it's a different kind of pain when you experience rejection from people you relate to. And that's not something that I experienced until I had that. I mean, on a certain hand, being in a, a black family who I was different from and being, you know, an artist, being queer. This is definitely a series. I call it the only universe. And so I I would like for the sculptures that I incorporate my own body with, like the ones with all my hair, these are sculptures that I don't sell. They're the ones that I would like to be acquired, the ones I exhibit and then, you know, they come back. These are like the OG sculptures, the first ones that I made. 
And then there are other sculptures that I've recently been making, like some of these smaller ones, which are, I made knowing in my mind that I was going to sell them. So that's like a, a separate series in itself. And I don't know if this is always going to be the way that I you know, share them, but this is what I'm currently working on and just really expanding in form and also titling sculptures is a huge part of like my process. Um, and also, yeah, just learning how to like navigating creating and then giving it away because it's it's an intimate process and I get very attached to my sculptures because they take on a presence of their own.